Hey guys, Rock Flamingo here, bringing you my Guild Wars 2 leveling build series, which will feature a video for each of the 9 classes. The reason I'm doing this series is because the vast majority of build videos online seem to be solely focused on endgame meta builds, and I know from my engagement with the Guild Wars community that a lot of you out there want help with some of the more basic elements, so this one is for you guys. In these videos, I'll be going through all of the information you need to make sure your character is as powerful as possible all the way from level 1 to 80. I'll be covering the best weapon types to use for your class, as well as armor stats, runes, utility skills, and specializations. If you've not yet made up your mind which class you want to play, check out the class guide playlist on my channel, where I have a detailed guide on each of the classes to help you make that decision. I'd like to thank you all for your fantastic support I've received on my channel so far, and if you find this content useful, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to be kept up to date on my latest content. You can also follow me on Twitter at Heroic Flamingo, where I'll be posting regular updates as well as doing gem giveaways for you guys. Finally, I just wanted to let you guys know that there are two links in the video description that might interest you. The first one is to sign up for a free Guild Wars 2 account, so if you haven't got an account yet, do give that a click. And the second one is a link to the Guild Wars 2 store page, where you can purchase the Path of Fire expansion and get Heart of Thorns with it for no additional cost. All of these things help support the channel and I thoroughly appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so now it's time to have a look at the leveling build for the Guardian. And I'm really excited to bring this one to you because it's a really good build. Um, the Guardian is just a great class in general, so I'm really excited to show this to you. And the first thing we're going to have a look at are the weapons. So first up, we've got the Greatsword. This, in my opinion, is a must for this build and probably for the Guardian in general. I pretty much always run a Greatsword in my Guardian builds. Um, you know, I'm not saying you have to use it, but to be honest, if you want to follow this build, it's going to be pretty crucial. Damage is great. Um, so to be honest, I would definitely recommend this. So let's have a quick look. So your number one ability on this is a chain ability, which is which is a pretty high damage to be fair as well. You've got strike, vengeful strike, and wrathful strike. So you're gonna um, it's it's from melee range. So just bear in mind this is a melee weapon. Um, it's not like the mesmer where the uh, greatsword is a ranged weapon. Uh, so from melee distance you're gonna hit up to three targets with your first hit. Then you're gonna hit them again, and then with the third one you're gonna do a powerful hit, which is gonna hit up to three enemies and it's going to apply might for each foe you strike so that you know if you're hitting three enemies then that's going to be three uh, stacks of might so that's effective um, and you'll um, see when we're going through this that one of the main things about this is sticking buffs on yourself it's really good um, for buffing yourself up and um, that's one of the things that you draw your power from so you know don't ignore that um, so if you are you know using this chain make sure you let it play out because the third skill is where you get most of the damage and then also the buff as well so try not to interrupt your chain as much as possible number two on the great sword right this is one of your highest damage abilities so pay attention to this this is whirling wrath and this is spin in place and swing your great sword while hurling powerful projectiles so this one does have a range to it generally you do want to do it from quite close to an enemy um, so you if you've got enemies around you preferably because it's going to shoot it out in all directions but it's going to do a good amount of damage um, in a small radius around you as well as um, you know shooting enemies from a bit further away as well so it's good because it will do a bit of damage to further away enemies but predominantly it's ones close to you that will get the um, the bulk of the damage so as you can see really awesome as well everyone loves a um, an ability when you spin around with a massive sword so it's got that nice uh, wow factor to it but then it will do a bunch of damage so you want to uh, utilize that as much as possible so obviously if you if you're just starting out um, you know do bear in mind that you'll unlock these weapon skills as you go along uh, so your first weapon skill you unlock at level one um, so you have that from the start second one level two third one level four fourth one level six and by the time you get to level eight which won't take you very long you'll have all five of your weapon skills so you know maybe before looking at this get to level eight so you've got all your weapon skills so you can start utilizing them but like i say that won't take very long anyway 
So your third skill is Leap of Faith. This is pretty good, um, pretty good for entering combat. I do like to have an ability to enter combat rather than just sort of like strongling up to someone and hitting them. Um, this one, it's Leap at your foe in, and it inflicts blindness and heals you for each foe hit. So as you can see, um, so you're going to leap at them. So what I would suggest is use, I mean, to enter combat, but possibly to, to jump towards an enemy um, if you're already in combat. It's probably the um, best use of it, to be honest, because it does heal you as well. Um, so, you know, if you're fighting one enemy, you've killed them, use it to jump to the next, because not only will you use it to get around quickly, so you don't have to uh, run around, but you're also going to um, heal yourself and inflict blindness on the enemy as well. As you can see, really awesome there nice animation so that's gonna be a pretty good one to use in combat as well so your number four skill this is an important one so this is a symbol skill so it's symbol of resolution so pierce the ground with a mystic symbol that damages foes while granting resolution to allies so what this does is it sticks it if you you know if you're not familiar with the uh, mechanics for the guardian I'll quickly show you so this sticks a symbol down as you can see it's got this radius here nice and obvious view you can see that and that's going to buff you um, so that's going to damage foes and it's also going to buff you so it's going to give you resolution um, so your incoming condition damage is decreased um, as you can see um, it does a decent amount of damage as well up to five targets in the area so as soon as you get into combat so if you've jumped at an enemy using your number three you want to stick down your symbol uh, so you're damaging all the enemies in there as well as buffing yourself and then maybe whacking your number two uh, so you might want to uh, like I said, jump towards an enemy, stick down his symbol, and then spin the hell of him. And even just by doing that, you'll be surprised with this build that you've just done a ton of damage to your enemy just by doing that. So your fifth and final skill on the greatsword is Binding Blade. So throw blades at your foes, causing damage over time. Bound foes can be pulled to you, and the effect ends when a move, uh, when a foe moves out of range. So this one isn't one of your most highest damage abilities and there's no need to be spamming this one all the time. Um, your other ones to be honest are more effective. You want to be using your number four and your number two as well as um, letting your chain play out as well. So, uh, but you know, it's still got its uses as well um, in terms of a bit of crowd control and, and pulling enemies towards you. So you can use maybe your number two. Um, so let's just demonstrate. So you spin around and you shoot blades at enemies and um, basically it sticks blades in enemies and uh, does damage over time. But uh, a good use of it is if you press the, you know, if you've damaged an enemy, if you press your number five again, it's going to pull those enemies to you. So anyone, so if they're sort of, you know, spread out a little bit around you, use that to stick the blades in them, press it again to bring them towards you. And then you can, you know, put your symbol down because you want to bring them within your symbol range and then maybe spin around to them. So just a couple of things to uh, ways to link up your skills there. Um, but overall... It's a really great weapon. It's got um, a good couple of abilities there that are going to be doing a, like sort of the bulk of your damage. So definitely don't ignore the greatsword, and it's definitely something you want to use for this build. So with your second weapon set, um, I would definitely recommend going one one hand sword. So main hand sword, um, off hand focus like this. So sword and focus. Um, so you know there is this is the melee option because um, obviously from your sword it's going to be a melee uh, weapon you can use a scepter as a ranged option here so if you are looking at going fully um, sort of well well you want a ranged weapon set obviously if you're using the greatsword for your other weapons that you're already melee so if you want to get uh, a ranged option I would say go with the scepter but personally I would definitely go with the sword so i'm not going to show off the scepter here but just so you know like it is a valid ranged option if you do want a ranged option i would say scepter with still the focus because the focus got some good abilities here which i'll show you sorry about that i just got booted out of that area because of an event was going on uh, so sorry yeah so scepter and focus for ranged option but i'm going to go sword focus definitely for maximum dps i don't think you're going to need a ranged option necessarily but um, I'll let that be your choice. So the sword. So your options here. You've got your number one, which is another chain skill. So sword of wrath, sword arc, and sword wave. So slash your foe. So bear in mind once again, this is similar to the chain on the uh, great sword. It's melee range. Hits up to three enemies. So hits them once, hits them again, and then the third one sends out a wave of attacks that strikes multiple targets. So once again, if you do use this chain, 
do let it play out because the third hit is going to do the majority of the damage. Your number two here on the sword is Symbol of Blades. Uh, so teleport to your target and blind nearby foes. Create a symbol at your feet that damages nearby enemies and benefits allies. So this is a good um, ability here. Uh, this is good for entering combat. So as I said with the uh, on the Great Sword, your number three ability, that's good for jumping into combat, but predominantly, because it's got a hill to it, predominantly if you're already in combat, you want to use it to jump to enemies. This one's maybe good for entering combat because you're going to um, blind the enemies so you can get some attacks in and obviously their next attack's going to miss, which is useful. But it also creates a symbol at their feet and damages nearby enemies. So it's nice to have a little teleport ability, as you can see. So it'll teleport to the enemy um, and yeah, it will do damage, but it will also, yeah, stick that symbol on the ground. So that's a really good ability to use there. And then your third ability on the sword. This is a pretty cool one. So Zealot's Defense. So block ranged attacks while casting magical projectiles. So this can be used as a, um, a, a defensive ability, but also has good offensive qualities as well. So you block for three seconds, um, which stops missiles from hitting you, but it does a decent amount of damage as well. And it's got a range of 600, so you don't have to be right up to the enemy. You can use it from mid-range. So if the enemy's just over here and they're using projectiles on you, I'll just show you now. Bam, as you can see, you'll be blocking those projectiles, but your sword hits sends waves towards the enemies and does a little bit of range damage there. Um, so that's a really effective skill as well, especially if you know you're getting clobbered from range and you need that little bit of protection as well. So the focus offhand, you've got Ray of Judgment. Uh, and this is infuse your foe with the light of judgment, inflicting damage each interval if they're initially struck. So this is a um, this is a good uh, damage ability. You definitely want to use this. Um, so what you'll do is you can use it for quite far away. So you can use this when you're entering combat. So as long as um, as you can see, um, as long as it hits them, it will be inflict damage each interval. So six second duration, and every three quarters of a second, it's going to do damage. So you'd use that and it will basically, yeah, puts a ray of judgment on the enemy and does damage over time. So you can stick that on the enemy and then you can use all your other abilities to damage them, but it will continuously damage them over that period. So it's pretty good to use on the enemy sort of as you're entering combat um, because there's no point using it when they're about to die because then you've sort of wasted um, that, to be fair. So your number five ability here, so your second one on the offhand focus is Shield of Wrath. So create a shield to block the next three attacks. If the shield's not destroyed, it explodes and damages nearby foes. So this is a really good defensive ability. I'd recommend using this as well, sort of when you're entering combat, um, because you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna block the next three attacks. And if the shield's not destroyed, it explodes and damages nearby foes. You can see, so stick that on you, and you've got the shield around you. So bear in mind, this isn't one of those ones that you have to like channel. Um, you know, like obviously you have a couple and other classes where you channel and then you counter that one You can use all your abilities while it's active. So when as you enter combat when they start to hit you um, You know smack that button you'll block a couple of attacks and if you don't um, So if the shield isn't destroyed if you don't block them it is going to explode and do damage anyway Which means you put you you know the more effective thing is that you use it to block damage So that's the priority use it when you're taking damage but just as you're entering combat because quite often enemies might use quite a powerful attack as their first uh, like their first attack so just as you aggro the enemy use that use a shield you know bang out all your other abilities and you see the whole time you're using that that's going to be blocking the attacks so it's a really good way of staying alive um because i'll, I'll go into it a bit more but you actually have a really low base health uh, with the guardian which maybe is a bit weird because you think of it more as a tankier profession but as you can see I, i'm not scaled down i'm level 80 and i've only got eleven and a half thousand health when i get to the stats i'll, I'll show you what i'm doing with that because I've, I've not got a lot of vitality because so you could up that but yeah i mean you really need to focus on your defensive abilities they are important so don't ignore that it's got crazy damage this build but you do need to make sure you're using your buffs and your defensive abilities to stay alive Okay, so that is everything on the weapon. So you've got the great sword and then the sword focus as your second set. So when you start off the game, um, I'd say main the great sword. Use that. It'll be decent damage for when you're just leveling, leveling to start with. And then um, once you get to uh, level 10 and you unlock your weapon swap, you're definitely going to want to go with sword and focus as your second set like i said there is an alternative scepter and focus if you really want a ranged option but i definitely recommend this 
um, for maximizing your damage. Just make sure you use your defensive skills and you shouldn't have too much of a problem staying alive. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the healing, utility and elite skills. Okay, so now it's time to look at the healing, utility and elite skills for the leveling build. So first up you've got your healing skill. You'll have a healing skill straight away from level 1. Um, so uh, you know you'll be able to use that straight away and when you can um, use your um, skill points to purchase this one so you've got litany of wrath so this is a meditation skill so this is heal yourself and for a brief time heal yourself based on a percentage of damage dealt to enemies so this is an interesting one so you can see um, you get a, you get a base heal which is okay it's not amazing but it's decent and then 33% of damage dealt is returned to you as healing. So you kind of want to time this right with one of your big damage abilities. Um, so what I would recommend is, you know, if you particularly need a big heal, what you want to do is you want to use um, Lifting of Wrath to heal yourself. So you get that initial heal and then you straight away want to use Whirling Wrath, which is your great sword spinning ability. So if you've, you know, for example, you've got your symbol down, which is doing some damage, you can use your healing skill and then spin. So um, you'll get your initial heal, but also all the damage you're doing from that, which is your highest damage ability, 33% uh, of that is gonna be going back to your health, as well as you'll also be doing um, passive damage with your symbol of resolution as well. And that will be um, giving you health as well. And that lasts for six seconds, which is quite a long time. So you could still with that, maybe swap over to here and use a couple of your abilities as well um, that are decent damage. For example, if you had Ray of Judgment on, that would be doing damage over time. So that could help give you a nice little heal over a few seconds as well. So just bear that in mind. Don't just smack this to heal yourself and just forget about it. Make sure you time it right. Obviously, if you need to heal, you need to heal. Don't get me wrong. But um, a little bit of time, I wouldn't go amiss to make sure you maximize the amount you can heal yourself. So that's why I've gone with that ability, because you've got massively high damage output, and this is based on a percentage of damage. So the higher your damage, um, the higher um, your healing is going to be. So that's a really good way. Like I said um, in the last part, uh, you know your, your health is relatively low, so you do have to think about these things, especially if you're going with the same build as me here, with the same weapons, you're going to be fully melee. So fully melee with low health means you really have to think about staying alive. Um, so just bear that in mind when using this healing ability. So for your utilities, um, first up I've got Sword of Justice. So this is a spirit weapon ability and it's will the Sword of Justice to appear beside your enemy and attack nearby foes. Uh, so this is pretty cool here as you can see it cripples the enemy, puts vulnerability on them, hits up to five enemies. It's also an ammo skill, so you can cast it a few times and the count recharge is 20 seconds. Uh, you can use it from far away in its ground target ability, so you stick it on top of the enemy or enemies predominantly. And it's going to be a little spinny attack there, which is going to damage all those enemies. As you can see, stick some conditions on them as well. It's not one of your highest damage abilities, but it's quite easy to just sort of like drop that on, on a group of enemies like that. Like I said, uh, you can use multiple charges, so you can drop a few of those. On the enemy's heads and that's going to do a little bit of extra damage you can just use it to sort of um, supplement your damage as well you're hitting them it's going to be doing some damage and, and like I said it can hit up to five targets so it can be pretty good for attacking a group of enemies and if it's sticking cripple on them it's going to slow them down and then also vulnerability which means you're already doing loads of damage but you can do that that little bit more as well so that's that's probably not a must but I do find it a really useful ability it just sort of that little bit of extra damage so I would recommend having that as one of your utilities. Next up I've got Stand Your Ground which is a shout ability and this is grant stability to yourself and allies. So um, stability um, means that you can't be knocked down or pushed back or pulled or stunned or any of that stuff and also as you can see it gives you resolution as well so incoming condition damage is decreased. Um, as you can see it, you know, it's good in a group situation as well because it buffs your allies. It's quite good to use when you go into battle, so when you first enter in combat, as it's going to mean that you know you're not going to be um, knocked down and stuff like that. As as quite a lot of people, uh, quite a lot of enemies might use that skill straight away. As you can see, it also breaks stun as well, so you can use it if you're already stunned. So it's a pretty good ability there. Like I said, it's a nice defensive buff ability. So you use that when you're coming into combat, so that you can't be knocked down and decreases the damage on you as well. Like I said. You've got to pay attention to those defensive abilities. So it's just a good addition. I definitely recommend keeping that on your bar here. 
Uh, next up we've got Bane Signet. So the passive on this Signet, so just by having it on your bar, you're going to have improved power. As you can see, just the, the passive um, on our bar here improves the power. Obviously this is a this is a power build, we want to do as much damage as possible. Uh, so it's good to have that there, um, just giving you just a, a natural buff to your damage. Uh, the active on it is that you knock down enemy, uh, knock down your enemy and damage them. To be honest, I wouldn't really be using that. I, this is here for the passive. Um, only really if you're desperate and you need to knock down an enemy would I recommend doing that. So yeah, you don't really need to worry about the the active on that. You just want to uh, keep the passive and just improve your power at all times. I mean, if if you need a different thing, you could go with a different signet um, that reduces incoming damage. That one grants increased condition damage, uh, which you definitely won't want, and that one improves concentration. So you may need that one to reduce incoming damage. Signet of Judgment. If you're really, um, you know, struggling with staying alive, but you know, with this build being predominantly about damage, and to be fair, you should be killing most things before they can do too much damage to you. I definitely recommend having that to buff your damage, which is cool. Um, obviously, there's a couple other options here. You've got other spirit weapons that you can use along here, but definitely think the sword of justice is your best bet and there's a couple of different shouts uh, which give you different buffs so just um have a look at those if there's a if there's a buff you're particularly interested in you might like to use that instead but i've i've found that these three are the best um ones to use for the build and i definitely recommend going with all three of them so last up we got the elite skill um so i've got fill my wrath which is a, another shout ability so this is nice because it's only got a 30 second cooldown so you can use this quite a lot and it grants fury and quickness to nearby allies the duration of the quickness you grant yourself is doubled so as you can see quickness for a few seconds so skills and actions are faster and fury means you've got increased critical chance uh, you know good in a group situation as well because it's going to be buffing your allies but just predominantly focusing on yourself for a leveling build uh, it's a really good buff uh, which you can use um, semi-regularly so 10 seconds of 20% crit uh, increase chance. So that's really good. And then your skills and actions are quicker. So I definitely recommend going with this. So you can use that and you can see you can cast all of your skills quicker. Um, so, I mean, you may think is casting your skills quicker that important, but when you think about it, uh, quicker skills just means more damage, especially with these weapon skills. So to be honest, it is really important. And if you use it like sort of as you're entering combat, um, you're going to just do a ton of damage to enemies before they even have a chance to uh, hit back. So I definitely recommend that. So uh, there's a couple of alternatives you could use, but to be honest, um, like yeah, there is this one as well. So renewed focus, so making yourself invulnerable and recharging your virtues. So once again, that's the defensive option. But just going all out damage, I'd really recommend this setup here. I'm pretty happy with it. And if you're just looking to do as much damage as possible, do that. But the only alternative I'd make is maybe use a more defensive option if you really are struggling with staying alive. But I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, so that's all of the healing utility and elite skills. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to have a look at are the weapon and armor stats. Okay, so now it's time to have a look at the weapon and armor stats for the Guardian. Okay, so it won't surprise you to hear that it is a predominantly power build. So power is going to be our priority as normal. So that means when you start leveling, um, obviously after a little bit, uh, some of the gear will start to have one stat on it. That one stat should always be power. Don't bother going with anything else to start with. You know, if you want to start leveling quicker, you want to be doing more damage. So power will always be your priority there. Uh, when you start to get a second um, stat on the gear, you can sort of go where you want to. Like if you feel like you need more health, go vitality, more armor, go toughness. Or you can, you know, you can go precision and um, start up in that crit chance. Um, but it doesn't matter too much at that stage. Uh, just go with what you feel comfortable with. When you start getting to the higher levels and you've got um, free stats on your gear, that's when you have to start making a decision. So obviously the ultimate damage uh, stats, as always, are power, precision, ferocity, with power being the biggest stat. So that's the berserker stats. So that's obviously going to give you maximum power, which increases your base damage. Um, precision, which is increases your critical hit chance. And ferocity, which is increases your critical hit damage. So that's going to just mean that you do the maximum amount of damage. 
but obviously there are other things you need to take into account like survivability um, and health and stuff like that um, so let's just have a little think about that so overall I have actually got power precision frosty I believe on absolutely everything yeah absolutely everything so I've gone full power um, uh, with this one with full crit chance and everything like that um, obviously there is an option uh, to add in some vitality, add in some toughness if you feel like you're dying quicker. It's sort of a personal preference with that. Um, what I'm showing you here is just the maximum amount of damage. But obviously if you keep dying really quickly then damage is worthless. However, if you make yourself really tanky and hard to kill but you don't do a lot of damage, then that's also kind of pointless and that's really going to slow down your leveling. So for leveling it's definitely quicker to do more damage but also you don't want to be dying all the time. So I would recommend potentially adding some vitality, uh, maybe by going with a different one on your accessories here. Uh, you could stick vitality on here and maybe still go power, precision, frosty on your um, armor and weapons. Um, so that could be a good option to give yourself a bit of health. Um, like I say, your base health is low. Overall, the reason why I've gone with power, precision, ferocity um, with the Guardian despite the low health is because there are a lot of really good defensive skills um, there are some good defensive passive bonuses uh, which I'll go into like with the virtues and stuff like that which help you stay alive you've also got heavy armor naturally so you have a bit better armor than if you're using a, a light or medium armor profession so overall I don't find myself to be that squishy um, so if you're comfortable enough with that then go power precision frosty and you will just absolutely slap everything and it will just die so quickly that's the that's the dream you know that's what you want to aim for but maybe if you're getting used to it you know you're not quite as comfortable with it yet you might want to um, you know add some vitality or toughness in there and I totally get that and it's totally legit but just try not to do too much because then you will start to uh, lose some of that damage and your leveling will slow down um, so like I said power precision frosty for most of it, add in a bit of vitality if you need it. Um, for the rune, if you're you you know if you're leveling, you don't have to worry too much about this because you'll be getting new armor all the time. But when you get to high levels, I've got superior rune of strength, which is power and might duration, um, which is obviously just maxing the amount of damage that I can do. Um, you could also go superior rune of the um, scholar or superior rune of the eagle because they're good for damage and crit chance as well. Um, or superior rune of the pack those are all good options just your standard ones for a power build to be perfectly honest um, anything that's going to just make you do even more damage and on the weapons in terms of a sigil um, I've gone superior sigil of strength and sigil of force force just gives you base 5% extra damage it's pretty standard for a power build and strength is gain might for 10 seconds upon critically hitting a foe um, so obviously that that plays in quite well with this which has increased your might duration and then on your second weapon set here, I've gone Force on the sword, so just increasing my base damage. But on the offhand, I've actually gone Bloodlust. So gain a charge of plus 10 power each time you kill a foe. Uh, and that can stack up to 25 times. So if you're killing enemies, that's going to be uh, um, stacking the amount of power. Once again, everything here, I'm just trying to up it as much as possible. You can see the base power there it's really high so you do a ton of damage uh, when you fight enemies on this so if you can master the defensive side of the guardian then to be honest i'd recommend going all in with the power and just absolutely destroying everything so that is the weapon and armor stats uh, so the next thing we want to have a look at are the specializations and traits okay so now it's time for the specializations and traits for the guardian so let's have a look. So um, obviously you've got five specializations to choose from and you've got three slots. Don't worry if you don't have all these right now because you do unlock them as you progress. Uh, so you unlock your first specialization at level 21, your second one at level 45, and your third one you won't actually unlock until you're level 71. So there may still be a way to go, but it's still important that you, you know, pay attention to see what you want to prioritize here. You know, don't just get these and just stick them wherever because it really does make a difference when fine-tuning your build when you when you're talking about doing as much damage as possible uh, leveling as quickly as possible traits really do make a difference and you want to make sure your traits complement the skills that you have along here uh, so um, obviously do pay attention and I'm not saying there isn't one way of doing it 
you know you can use different traits um, but obviously I'm just going to give you a guide here of the ones that I use and maybe you can use it as a basis and obviously if there's ones you prefer then feel free to switch that out so first of all we've got zeal so I would definitely recommend this to be the first one that you choose when you get to uh, level 21 uh, go with zeal to start with as your passives on that are zealots resolution which cast lesser symbol of resolution when you are struck while below the health threshold health threshold is only 75 percent so that means you're going to be casting resolution quite a lot which is a good um, buff that you're going to want on you so it just helps you stay buff at all times you've got symbolic exposure which is symbols inflict vulnerability on foes deal increased strike damage to vulnerable foes so obviously that just adds an extra condition to all of your symbols which we've got a couple of as you saw uh, and then obviously more damage to vulnerable foes that's always good and then symbolic power which is symbol still increased strike damage uh, so once again buffing the symbols like our number four here uh, and also our number two on the sword as well puts the symbol down so there's a couple of skills that's going to affect in terms of the choices i've gone middle middle bottom so that gives us Fiery Wrath, which is deal increased strike damage to burning foes. Um, we haven't really seen it yet, but when I get into the profession mechanics next, I'll be showing you how um, setting enemies alight and using uh, burning is actually quite a uh, important part of this build. So you'll notice that quite a lot of the uh, traits I'm going with here will be buffing that, so just bear with me. So yeah, damage increases 7% against burning foes. Uh, zealous blade so your power is increased gain additional power while wielding a greatsword your greatsword skills have reduced recharge shouldn't have to explain this one to you more base power happy days extra base power while, while wielding a greatsword which we will be the vast majority of the time and then recharge reduction on those greatsword skills as well so this is a must one of the reasons why you're going with this seal tree here is because you want that zealous blade um, one there which is excellent and last up here, you've got Symbolic Avenger. Your strike damage is increased whenever your symbols hit a foe. Uh, so 2% damage stacks up to 5 times, so that can give you 10% um, damage there if you're obviously um, using your symbols. So once again, it makes it even better. So for your second one, um, I go with Radiance. Um, this, just to clarify real, real quick here, so Virtues is more of a defensive one. So what I would recommend is if you're having trouble with survivability and dying a lot and you know the changes you're making to your stats aren't really helping that much perhaps consider going with virtues as your second one at level 45 but if you're not and if you're able to make adjustments to your stats and to your skills to help with survivability I definitely recommend going with radiance as your second um, specialization tree here to maximize your damage so the passives on this we've got justice is blind which is gain a light aura and blind nearby foes when you activate virtual uh, virtue skill one and we'll go into the virtues in a little bit when we do the uh, profession mechanics but um yeah it just means you're going to um have reducing uh, incoming condition damage and blinding enemies uh, which just makes your virtues even better the second one is Renewed Justice, which is Virtue Skill 1 is renewed when you kill a foe. This is super important, um, which I'll show in the next part, but that's a really important passive. And it's definitely why I'd recommend, when at all possible, making this your second tree. And Radiant Power. So attacks against burning foes have an increased chance to critically hit. Uh, and your ferocity is increased. So base ferocity, crit damage is higher, not going to say no. And then increase critical chance as well um, against burning foes which we'll go into will be quite common as well so that's a really good option so this tree is really important uh, from a damage point of view in terms of the choices we've gone top bottom bottom that gives us inner fire which is gain fury when you strike a foe that has burning stacks over the threshold um, threshold is free so quite often they'll have that and it just means you have 20% extra crit chance and you can see we've had a few things of extra crit chance here that's all going to add up which means you're going to be critting constantly uh, which is going to be excellent um, because you're going to be doing loads of damage here we've got retribution which is strike damage dealt is increased while you have resolution um, so 
10% damage increase and obviously we've had a couple of things which give us the resolution buff so that should be up a lot of the time giving us a nice base 10% damage increase definitely not going to say no to that and then here you've got righteous instincts which is resolution increases your chances to critically strike and grants might each interval so there you go so um, buffing your resolution uh, give because resolution gives you critical chance increase by 25% which is ridiculous and might at interval so you go with this um, and what it means is you want resolution up as much as possible which we saw with some of our um, skills they give you that so just make sure you have a look at your skills to check what gives you resolution because you want to try and keep that up as much as possible so with our third and final specialization I'm going with Virtues because it's going to help us a bit defensively, so I definitely recommend going with this. Um, you won't unlock your third one until level 71, but you see when you get into those higher levels you're going to be fighting some hard enemies, so I think Virtues will definitely help you here. So your passives on this are Inspired Virtue, which is Virtues apply boons to allies when activated and deal increased strike damage for each boon on you. So as you can see that's good couple of boons there um, so each of your different virtues gives you a different boon and it just makes your virtues even better so you're definitely going to want that next you've got virtue resolution which is gain resolution when you activate a virtue resolutions you grant have increased duration so they last even longer and um, this is one of the key things that links in with this as well they were talking about resolution gain resolution when you activate a virtue you're going to be activating virtues a lot um, let me just link this back to one other thing as well. Uh, where was it? Yeah, so Virtue Skill 1 is renewed when you kill a foe. Um, and you'll be killing foes a lot with this damage, which means you'll be able to use your F1 ability a lot, uh, which means you'll be able to keep resolution on you pretty much at all times. So that is a fantastic option there, especially because we buffed resolution here with the crit chance increase. So you can see how it's all starting to come together here as well. And then finally, power of the virtuous. So gain condition damage based on your vitality. Virtues gain reduced recharge. So the first bit's sort of irrelevant. You're not too bothered about condition damage. And your vitality is probably pretty crap as well. Um, but virtues gain reduced recharge, which is nice. 15%, uh, which means you'll be able to use them even quicker. So uh, with our choices, we've gone middle, top, bottom, uh, which is resolute subconscious gain resolution and Aegis when disabled um, so as you can see uh, if someone puts stun days knock back on you you're going to get Aegis which is going to block the next income attack and resolution so once again another way of getting resolution on yourself that's why we've gone with that and then here inspiring virtue strike damage dealt is increased after activating a virtue so for six seconds after using a virtue you have plus 10 percent damage and that's going to be up pretty much all the time which is excellent and finally, we've got Indomitable Courage, which is the active effect of Virtue Skill 3, breaks stun and grants stability to nearby allies. Its passive effect gains a shorter interval. So that makes your F3 even better. Um, you gain ages periodically with this, and this reduces the interval between them, so that's really good. Uh, this is when it obviously just helps you stay alive, and then using it has some extra buffs as well, so it just means that's a bit of a good button for getting out of trouble. Okay, so that is all of the specializations. Hopefully you can see how um, that's sort of starting to build our class and make it more powerful. And it really is important with the Guardian here. You could see when I was going through that how each of those things actually made you really powerful. So the key is you want to keep resolution up. And there's lots of things that we use to do that. Uh, one of them is Virtues, which we're going to have a look at now. Uh, because that is everything for the, uh, skill, uh, for the traits and specializations. And now we're going to move on to the profession mechanics. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the profession mechanics for the Guardian. So this is the Virtue system. Um, obviously, I've mentioned that quite a few times already without trying to go into too much detail. Your Virtues are your F1 to F3 abilities here. And they're a bit like Signets in that they have a passive effect and then an active effect as well when you use them. So let's have a quick look at the passive abilities here. Uh, so do make sure you listen to this section as well because this is actually a really key part I'm not just showing you what they do this is really key to your build here uh, and it's one of the reasons why you do so much damage uh, so yeah first up with your passive effects you've got virtue of justice which is that you burn foes every few attacks um, so that helps you inflict burning on your enemies 
Your second one here, Virtual Resolve. It regenerates health continuously. Um, so this is one of the reasons why, um, you know, even though you've got low health, you can um, have a decent amount of survivability because you've got these passives. And then with the third one, you've got Virtue of Courage, which is that you gain Aegis periodically, uh, which means you block the next incoming attack. So another one there, which is good for keeping you alive. With regards to the active effects, your main priority is going to be your first one here, Virtue of Justice. Reason being is because the activate ability is that you and your allies inflict burning on the next attack, which obviously basically instead of burning every few attacks, you're guaranteed uh, to inflict it on the next attack. Um, obviously we looked at quite a few things and we've got a bunch of things in our uh, traits that um, buff us against burning enemies. So effectively we want our enemies to be burning at all times, right? So there's a couple of ways we can do that. Uh, so first of all, obviously you want to activate this ability and you want to do it whenever you possibly can. Um, so basically, yeah, as soon as you get into combat, uh, when you fight an enemy, F1, as you can see, and then you'll be able to set them alight with your next attack. Um, you can see because of all of the traits we've got, there's a lot of buffs on there as well. You've got Might, you've got Blindness, you've got Resolution, you've got Light Aura, uh, can hit up to five targets. So that's going to be really effective, so we buffed that quite a lot. And obviously that took 17 seconds to come back, which is quite a long time. But if you remember, uh, one of our passive traits, I think on the Radiance line, uh, was that um, whenever you kill an enemy, um, your virtue of justice is going to automatically come back. So, you know, with this build, with the damage we're going to be outputting, you're going to be expecting to be killing enemies sort of every few seconds. So that means your virtue of resolve is going to be coming back every few seconds and you can just spam that. So literally use this whenever you kill an enemy and it comes back, use it again. Because you can be setting your enemies alight, um, which is going to mean that you're doing more damage against them. And then further on top of that, you're getting these buffs, including resolution, which we buffed even further. So your crit chance when you use that is going to go up massively, which is really awesome. So um, do bear that in mind. So you're going to have to stick that F1 ability in as much as you possibly can. So just make sure you do that because that's a really big part of the build. Uh, with regards to your active abilities on your Virtue of Resolve and Virtue of Courage, to be honest, they're here mainly, you know, for the passives. Uh, the passives are good, they're useful and they help you. But obviously, you do still have some effects and you can see um, the activate abilities are buffed as well with some of our traits. So just to show you, the active ability F2 is heal yourself and nearby allies. So it's a little bit of a chunk heal. Uh, so if you're really desperate use that, but most of the time we'll just sit there with the regenerate, but it does help um, y You know uh, cleanse some conditions as well and heals some allies so it can be useful if you're really in trouble Your uh, f3 here so virtual courage uh, the activate ability is that you grant ages to yourself and nearby allies so rather than getting it periodically um, It's a guaranteed ages there for you and your allies uh, we actually buffed this on the skill tree as well so that it gives us stability and resolution so using that every now and then when you really need some extra armor um, is advised you know it's a really powerful defensive ability you know if you're just doing loads of damage um, you know you generally won't need it but it's another way that you can get resolution if you haven't got your f1 if you haven't got resolution on you then you can use that to get it as well uh, but you can also use your f2 so you should basically you should have resolution up pretty much all the time um, but yeah, so that's a really good defensive ability, but obviously just by sitting on your bar there, you're going to be getting Aegis every now and then anyway, uh, so that's really awesome. So just remember, yeah, always use your F1 ability, Virtue of Justice, literally whenever you can, because uh, that is going to really help with doing as much damage as possible. Okay, so that is everything on the profession mechanics. Um, so the next thing we're going to have a look at is just do a quick build summary before wrapping the video up. All right, so we've pretty much covered everything for our uh, Guardian leveling build. I'm just going to do a quick build summary here just to go through what we've done. Uh, so with the weapons, we had our main one here, which is the Great Sword, which is a really good option. Your number two ability there being your most powerful attack. Uh, and always put your symbol down as well for extra damage, uh, as well as buffs. Um, for the second weapon set, we've got Main Hand Sword, Off Hand Focus. Uh, really good uh, extra melee damage there. Um, Ray of Judgment's a good damage ability and Shield of Wrath's a good defensive ability. If you really want a ranged option, you can swap this out for the Scepter. 
um, but you will lose a decent amount of damage so I wouldn't advise it unless you're really having trouble with survivability. Uh, with your um, healing utility in Elite, uh, we've got this meditation skill here um, and obviously that heals you for an amount of damage as well so use that and then use your number two Whirling Wrath to maximize the amount of health you come back. We've got a nice spirit weapon here that we can place down to do a little bit of extra damage. We've got a good little self buff here with stand your ground. Um, this is a passive that gives you more power. We generally don't use that active ability unless we're really desperate. Uh, so that will just sit there and give you some base power. And then you've got your last, um, uh, you've got your elite skill here, which is another shout. Nice quick cooldown on this, uh, and it gives you really good buffs. So you do more critical chance, and your skills and actions are faster for a few seconds. Um, we've got the um, skill trees here. We've got uh, zeal, radiance, and virtues. And as you can see, we've laid them out like this. Um, our one sec. We've gone power, precision, ferocity on pretty much everything. To be fair, um, like I said, you can stick some vitality as always in or toughness to give yourself some more survivability. But I've gone with this because we've got some good defensive abilities. Um, and then with the uh, profession mechanics, um, these give you some good um, passive buffs. F3 if you really need to stay alive, good defensive buffs there. But use your F1 all the time whenever you possibly can as that is going to burn foes and keep resolution up on yourself. And because of our traits that is going to refresh every single time you kill an enemy. So that's a really important part as well. So that is everything um, for our Guardian leveling build. I really do love this build um, and it does a ton of damage so I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm going to leave you now with a combat demonstration, just a brief one, just to show you what it looks like when it all comes together. But as always, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.